The purpose of this video is to provide compliance assistance to testers conducting the torque test of rotatable Phase 1 adapters. Specific procedures can be found in the executive order, while test sequencing and additional district requirements can be found in the applicable permit attachment. As always, the vapor recovery system and components must be certified, installed, and operated in a certified configuration prior to and during the test. Prior to conducting the torque test, the tester ensures the testing equipment meets the specifications of the test procedure and the applicable executive order. For example, this test requires a torque wrench to have a maximum full-scale range of 250 pound-inches with a minimum accuracy of 3.0% full-scale and meet a minimum readability of 5 pound-inch increments. Documentation verifying the torque wrench meets these requirements must be maintained with the test equipment. Please be reminded that torque test assemblies vary from system to system and the tester must use only the torque test assembly specified in the applicable executive order. In the first step of the procedure as shown here, the tester ensures all adapters are dry and wiped clean before conducting the test. The tester must also ensure the caps and cap gaskets are intact and do not show signs of excessive wear and damage. Next, and as shown here, the tester ensures the Phase 1 adapter can rotate a minimum of 360 degrees. It is important to note that this part of the test can only be conducted with a socket wrench, not the torque wrench. Additionally, the tester should verify that the adapter rotates at the swivel and not at the thread of the Phase 1 riser. If the adapter rotates at the thread of the Phase 1 riser, it is not installed per the applicable executive order and cannot be tested until repairs are made and the system is in a certified configuration. If the adapter does not rotate 360 degrees at the swivel, the adapter fails the test. After the tester verifies the Phase 1 adapter can rotate 360 degrees, the tester then ensures the torque wrench reads zero before beginning the torque test. Once the tester verifies the torque tool reads zero, the tester is ready to begin the torque test. It is important the tester holds the torque wrench properly to ensure accurate test results. This is done by placing one hand on top of the torque wrench directly above the center of the tool to keep the wrench level while applying pressure. A steady pressure must be applied gently and evenly just until the adapter begins to rotate. Once the adapter begins to rotate, the tester then records the torque value shown on the torque wrench. After recording this value, the tester must slowly rotate the adapter 120 degrees using a socket wrench from the point the first measurement was taken. A second measurement of the torque is then obtained using the same technique as the first measurement. Following the first two measurements, the tester will slowly rotate the adapter another 120 degrees using a socket wrench and take a third measurement, once again using the same technique as the first two measurements. After all three measurements are taken and recorded, the tester then averages the three torque measurements to obtain the final torque value for the Phase 1 adapter. The average torque of each Phase 1 adapter must not exceed 108 inch-pounds. The district, through test witnessing, has compiled the above list of common mistakes made by testers when conducting TP201.1b. One common mistake the district has observed is testers using a fill-tight torque tool on a CNI Phase 1 system. It is important the tester references the executive order to ensure proper test equipment is used. Using the filled tight test assembly to test the torque of a CNI Phase 1 adapter is prohibited. Other issues observed by the district is the lack of proper documentation for the test equipment, failing to wipe caps and adapters prior to testing, and using the torque wrench to rotate the adapters. Lastly, testers have also been observed holding the torque test tool improperly when conducting the torque test in some cases by only using one hand. Please be aware that all of the above may invalidate the test and result in enforcement action.